kusifu, tua kusifu, tua kusifu mungu mwenye nguvu. Au na mwanzo, tena mwisho, mungu wetu sifiwe. Tua kusifu, tua kusifu, tua kusifu mungu mwenye nguvu. Au na mwanzo, tena mwisho, mungu wetu sifiwe.
tunalisifu jina lako tunalibariki jina lako tunasema asante bwana tunasema asante bwana asante kwa kuweka kwenye uwepo wako asante bwana tunasema asante bwana pokea sifa zetu pokea utukufu utukufu wote bwana pokea utukufu wote bwana uinuliwe ndani ya maisha yetu uinuliwe kwenye mioyo yetu bwana pokea sifa pokea utukufu bwana pokea baraka pokea baraka bwana uimidiwe kwa maisha yetu tunalisifu jina lako tunalisifu jina lako unastahili unastahili bwana wewe ni mwema wewe ni mwema kwa nyakati zote wewe ni mwema bwana pokea sifa we worship you this morning we bless you we thank you oh god we honor you today you are our god you are our god and we are your children and we have gathered here oh god in your name we welcome you oh god in our minister come and dwell with us come and dwell with us we thank you we bless you we worship you we honor you oh god we magnify your name and we glorify you oh god we bless you oh god we thank you dear lord we thank you dear lord you can take your seats amen praise the lord bwana asifiwe amen i take this opportunity to welcome you to this service today we bless the lord for this day he has given to us and we appreciate you for coming we appreciate the viewers online who are watching us and we thank god for this day that he has given to us thank god for the opportunity he has given us to be in his presence to be in his presence amen i was waiting for something to be in his presence amen we thank god for the opportunity he has given to us there is nothing as beautiful as being in the presence of god nothing as joyous as being in the presence of god amen so we want to go into another session uh, i want to welcome the workers we want to give our offering so i welcome the workers to come in front that they may prepare to serve us even as we give Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy and there is life forevermore. We thank God for his presence. So I request you to prepare an offering to the Lord and those who are giving by Mpesa. I want just to remind you that uh, our pay bill number is 719-5221. If you are giving by Mpesa, our payable number is 719-5221. I believe the workers are now blessed. I want us just to raise our offering. By show of hands, I hope all the workers are well placed. I hope you are prepared. The man of God gave direction that uh, we will not be giving out envelopes during this time. The envelopes are already outside there. When you are coming in, you pick an envelope and you prepare yourself for this time. So we are hopeful that you have prepared yourself. So I want us just to lift up our are giving to the Lord uh, so that we can be able to just pray. So let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity you've given us that we may give to you. We thank you, Lord. We bless you 
for this offering. We, we sanctify it, O oh God, and we bless you and appreciate you for giving to us, O oh God, that you may give to you. So we surrender to you, even as you lead us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. you are giving, I request the choir to prepare themselves that you may be able to bless us and bless the Lord with a song. to welcome our elder in charge of uh, treasury finances. Just pray and bless us. Bless the giving. Praise the Lord. Let's be up in standing. I'm going to receive this offering in the name of Jesus. All right. Offering in your house on behalf of the Lord, on behalf of thy servant. Through the authority that you've given me, I receive it in the house of the Lord. And I speak a blessing to all of us in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will expand you, the Lord will enlarge you, the Lord will expand your territory, and you shall have more than enough. The Lord bless you, and the Lord prosper you. Receive this offering, which is in this basket, and which has come in other means of M-Pesa and other forums to receive it in the house of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
so run away. You're my refuge, my fortress, Lord, I'll never be afraid. Oh, Lord. The strength of your mind. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus for he never and he. Jesus is there. Jesus is there. Jesus is there to bring back your smile.
And we give the choir a better hand clap, please. Thank you, choir. You may take your seats. Good afternoon and praise the Lord. I said good afternoon and praise the Lord. How are you doing? What have you done with the opportunities God gave you last week? <laughs> How many of you got an opportunity to do something in the Lord? You got an opportunity to do something? Praise the Lord. We want to thank God again for giving us this opportunity and to be together again. And according to the word of God, God had a very good reason for gathering his people. One of them is that they may worship him and that God may visit them, he may do things among them. So when we gather together, we are supposed to believe God to do things for us. When we gather together. When the children gather together, the children of any family, there must be a call by his, their father, and the father declares certain things. That's what happened in Genesis chapter 49, when Jacob called his children, there's a call to speak to them. And every morning we are meeting before God. The other day I was speaking about last Sunday that we need firstly to interpret our understanding or to have a clarity of understanding how to strictly take what we are doing in God in terms of where are you coming from, where are you going. You are leaving your house, you are going to the church. So you are not a traffic computer to be interrupted by what is happening on the road. So that God will see that when we come to his house, we have embraced that we are going to worship the Lord. And I made this statement. If truly we worship the Lord, truly, God will pour his spirit among us and do wonderful things that have never been done before. God is able to heal. God does not heal because our preacher was preaching about healing. God heals us because he's healer. I am waiting for you for your Amen. But it will have to be with the understanding of where am I going and what am I going to do? Because many times when you are going to a place, we, 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 we lose the gravity or the engaging of the cause for why I am going. But I find when people are going to a shop, they are going to do a shop, they are going to do shopping. I find when people are going to a shopping mall, they are going to do shopping. I find when people are going to, a, uh, to the airport, they are going to the airport not to look at the airplane. They are going to the airport to accomplish a certain thing. They are going somewhere. So God wants together, together that you may speak to us. So you spoke to Moses in the burning bush. You caused Moses to know the intentions that you had. You caused Moses to know the days of slavery in Egypt were over. You caused Moses to know you are a covenant God. You called Moses to know you do not lie. You called Moses to know the promise given to Abraham was to be fulfilled. You called Moses to know there was a land given to them. You caused Moses to know the days to go to the promised land and come. Almighty God, you have called us, you have gathered us, like you spoke to Moses, to bring to knowledge, to bring to awareness of the intention that you have. For you have a good plan. You have a good purpose. Your purpose is good on us. You spoke to Moses to understand what you wanted. So today as we gather, we have our burning bush. Today as we gather, you have a cause to tell us what you want. Today as we gather, we have an opportunity to hear what God intends. And so you spoke to Moses, you will speak to us. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord. By his blood, we are cleansed. We are being made children of God. 
We are heirs of the kingdom of God. We have a special place in thee, O oh God. We are no more slaves of Satan. We are no more to be tormented by demons. There are no demons allowed to torment us. There are no evil spirits allowed to torment us. We are the chosen of the Lord. We are the beloved of the Lord. We are the children of God. We are the loved of the Lord. We are the daughters and the sons of God. We are like the high of the Lord. We are the privileged of the Lord. You have sent the Holy Spirit upon us so that he may dwell among us and that he may do among us that he may answer cry in our hearts, that he may attend to our afflictions, that he may look at our pains, that he may heal us. And so we gather today. We gather today. We gather in this place that you may do these things to us, that you may visit us, O oh God. So we shall not carry pains in our bones, in our bodies. We shall not lift up our hands with wounded pains. We shall not stand before you with backbones and the back pains. We shall not stand before you with a problem in our heart and in our kidney. We shall not stand before you with a throat that is frustrated. We receive your healing, O oh God. Send your healing among us. Send your healing among us. Send your healing among us. Send your goodness among us. Oh Lord, we worship you. We adore you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify your name. 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 We adore your name. We adore your name. We magnify your name. We adore your name. We exalt your name. You are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy. Let your presence come. Let your presence come. Let your presence come. Oh, Rama Kayata Laboyande. Oh, Rama Shanda in the Caribbean. Oh, Rama Shanda in the Caribbean. Oh, Rama Shanda in the Kandai. Oh, Rama Shanda. Oh, Rama Shereme. Oh, Yamakaya, oh, Yamashandai, Kariamosala Bakarabayande, oh, Yamashandai. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We adore your name. I adore your name. I adore your name. I adore your name. Say, Your mighty God. Say, Your mighty God. Any sickness in my life. Any disease in my life is in a wrong place and it is cast. I am the blessed of the Lord. Any sickness in my life, any disease in my life, it is in a wrong place. I was not ordained to carry sicknesses and diseases. I was not ordained to carry the spirit of infirmity. I was ordained to carry the Spirit of the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord is the Spirit of power. It is the Spirit of might. It is the Spirit of healing. I was not ordained to carry the Spirit of infirmity. And therefore the Spirit of infirmity, diseases and the sickness are cast. I am the blessed of the Lord. And I receive a leg in the name that is above every name. I receive a leg. Oh, Ramakaya Talabashanda. Lift up your hands where you are. Lift up your hands where you are. Lift up your hands where you are. Oh, Ramashanda in the Karabayanda. Oh, Ramashanda in the Karabashanda. Oh, Ramashala Bakarabayanda. Lord, for you are ailing, you are ailing, you are miracles, you are deliverance, you are intervention, you are intervention in our lives, you are intervention in our cause, you are intervention 
in our homes, your intervention, in our nation, your intervention, in our business, your intervention, in our lives, your intervention, oh God, your intervention, oh God, oh Ramasanda, oh Ramasanda, oh Ramasanda, Lekanda, oh Ramasanda, oh Ramasala Bakanda, oh Ramasanda. Let's give the Lord a better clap where we are. Let's give the Lord a better clap where we are. Ramasala, oh Ramasanda, I like Karabayande, oh Ramasanda, oh Ramasanda, oh Ramasanda. We are your children, oh God. We are purchased by the blood of your Son Jesus Christ, and have been made heirs with Him. We are not to live on torments and diseases and sicknesses and afflictions. Or when you shall come to the bunny bush. They shall be burned by the power of the Lord. They shall be burned by the Spirit of the Lord. They shall be burned by the grace of God. They shall be destroyed. Oh, Rakaba Yatala Bokere, Karaba Karaba Yana, Karaba Yatala Bayane, Karaba Yatala Bashelebeane, Karaba Shandala Bakaraba Yana, Karaba Yande Lebasuno, Karaba Yanda in the Koraba Yana. Oh, Ramasana. Say, Almighty God, your word is forever true. You said in your word that by the stripes of Christ that we were healed. So I believe your word. By the stripes of Christ, I was healed. My sicknesses were interchanged with the stripes. Jesus was beaten for me. And by his stripes, my diseases were healed. And though I, therefore, I confess by my mouth that the Lord is my healer. 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 Oh, Ramakaya Talaba Karabayana. Oh, Ramashanda Lava Karabayana. Oh, Ramayanda Lava Shanda. I confess by my word and by, the, by my mouth that by the stripes of Christ. I was healed. And any sickness in my life is in a wrong place. Any disease in my life is in a wrong place. And the spirit of iniquity is a cast spirit. And I am not given to carry a cast thing. I am the blessed of the Lord. So I offer myself, oh God, heal me from the head to the soul of my feet. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Come on, give the Lord and clap where you are. 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 Oh Ramashanda la Karabayanda. Oh Ramashanda la Karabayanda. Oh Ramashanda. Oh Ramashanda. And I worship you, Lord. I say I worship you, Lord. I adore you, Lord. I came not to condemnation. I came not to judgment. I came to the presence of the Lord. I came to the house of the Lord. I came to the presence of my Father. I came to the goodness of my Father. That my Father will renew me. My Lord will heal me. My Lord will deliver me. I came not for condemnation. For you have said in your word, there is therefore no condemnation. For them that are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk in the flesh, but they walk in the spirit, but the spirit of life in Christ Jesus 
has set us free from the law of sin and the death. I receive my reward. I receive. There is an angel in God for healing the sick. There is, there is an angel in God for healing the sick. I'm trying to come out of this kind of leading but there is an emergency, there is an angel in God. So please, can you just look at yourself? Look, look into your life, look at yourself, please. Look at your life, why don't you believe God? It is the same God that healed Kagoya the other day. It is the same God that healed the leg. Today, he knows you have a problem with your throat. Somebody you have a problem with your throat or your neck, both your neck and your throat, there are two things related. A person has a problem with his throat, and a person has a problem with his neck. Know that the Lord is looking to heal you. Today the Lord wants to heal you. I want you to heal yourself, heal yourself to God. Heal yourself. Just heal yourself to God. Oh, Ramashanda ile karabayanda. Oh, Ramashanda ile kandala buyaka. Oh, Ramashanda ile karabayanda la bashanda. Break out of the break out of the slavery of Satan. Break out of the slavery of the enemy that you may move to the liberty of God. Oh, Ramashala Bakanda. Ramashala Bakara Bayanda. Ramashala Bakara Bayanda. Ramashala Bakara Bayanda. For any infirmity, for any disease, for any sickness, whatever it is, whether it is in the heart, or it is in the breast, or it is in the lungs, whatever it is. Jesus, by his choice, we were healed. Oh, the Kabayata. Oh, the come on, give me the Lord and clap where you are. Give me the Lord and clap where you are. Give me the Lord and clap where you are. Give me the Lord and clap where you are. Give me the Lord and clap where you are. Give me the Lord and clap where you are. I say, give the Lord and clap where you are. Oh, Ramashanda. Ramashanda Labashanda. Ramashanda Labashanda. Ramashanda Labashanda. He was afflicted. He was condemned, not for his sins. He was condemned for our sins. He was afflicted for our diseases. And we cannot carry sicknesses and diseases. Oh, Raka. Ramayata la bakarabayande. Ramayata la bakarabayanda. Lord, accomplish, accomplish, Lord. Accomplish, Lord. Accomplish, Lord. Accomplish, Lord. Accomplish, Lord. So the centurion came to Jesus. He said, my son is sick. And he wanted his son to be healed. When we are to be healed, we must want. Because sickness is in us. They are not helping us. They are pulling us down. Disease in you and diseases in anybody and the sickness is not a help. It's a destruction. So the said, the centurion came to Jesus, I say, about his child, and they wanted to be healed. So those who want to be healed always must have this understanding that I want to be healed. And if you want to be healed, I ask you to take a step of faith and move in front. But remember, you must guard the protocols. If you want to be healed, you must put it in your heart. The altar is already full. Find out where you can stand now. come to that place 
that my Lord is the greatest doctor. They call me the great physician. The singer said, the great physician is now near. That our Lord is the greatest physician. And that we must come to age diseases and sickness in us. We cannot love them and call them ours. They are not ours, they are from their enemy. So the centurion went to Jesus because of his child. So he was willing and he was looking. The woman that went to Jesus, the woman that had emerged, she went with a craving, she went with a cry, she went with this attitude, I want to be healed. That must be our attitude. And so I pray for you, I speak to you healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed from the head to the sole of all your feet. Every demon come out of your life. Demons come out of the life of the children of God. You have no right. You have no right in the children of God. Come out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing for them. I speak healing to them. I speak healing. That has already been done. I speak healing that has already been brought by Christ. I speak healing that has already been purchased for you. I therefore transmit that healing. I therefore speak that healing in the name of Jesus Christ. The healing that was done for you. Oh, Rakata Yamakarabashandai. Oh, Rakata Bayata Labakarabashanda. Oh, Ramayata Labakarabayanda. Lift up your hands. Shalom. Shalom, Aranda. 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 Shalom, Shalom, Aranda. Shalom, Aranda. Shalom, Aranda. Shalom, Aranda. Shalom, Aranda. Shalom, Aranda. Every sickness is cast. Every disease is cast. Oh, Rakata Bayanda. Oh, Ramashala Bayanda. Oh, Ramayanda. Oh, Ramayanda. Be healed. Be woe. Be healed. The spirit of infirmity be cast out. Go away in the name of Jesus Christ. And the healing of the Lord come upon his children. The healing of the Lord come upon them. Come upon the head. And come upon them like the anointing that came upon Aaron. And on the beard of Aaron. Let the presence of the Lord come upon you. The presence of the Lord. The presence. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. Oh, Rakata Bayata Labayana. Oh, play every instrument. Play the instrument of the Lord. Shalabakara Bayanda Labashanda. Shalabakara Bayanda Labashanda. Karabayanda la bashala bayanda, karabayanda la bashila bayanda, karabayanda la bakara bayanda, karabayanda le bakara bayanda, karabashanda la bakara bayanda, karabashanda la bakara bayanda, karabayanda la bashila, karabayande, karabayanda, karabashila bakara bayanda. Shila bakara bashande, shila bakara bashande, shila bakara bashande, shila bakara bashanda, shila bakara bayanda, shila bakara bayanda la bashanda, shila bayanda la bakanda, shila bakara bayanda, shila bakanda. Put your put your focus in God, telling Him you are the Lord that He loves me. Begin to speak to the Lord, telling Him you are the Lord that He loves me. You are the Lord that He loves me. Come on, God of love, send me one. Invested by your mouth. You are the Lord. You are my healer. My healer. My healer. My healer. You say my healer. And heal my healer. My healer. Yes, Lord. You are yes, Lord. the Lord. My healer. Come on, say it. My you are my healer. Say it. You are you my healer. The 
Say this, say, Almighty God, God, I believe your word word. that by the Christ of Christ Christ, I was was healed. I came to your house house. not to see people, people. I came to worship, I I came before you, I I have worshipped you, and I'm in your presence. I lift my hands. And by faith, faith, I receive healing healing upon me me from my head head to the sole of my feet. feet. I declare declare the faith that I have in Christ Christ has has healed me. And I'm going to come forward forward and testify testify that it has worked for me. me. Thank you for healing me, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, give the Lord another bed and clap where you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, you may take your seats. Let's turn to our Bibles in the book of 1 Samuel. First Samuel chapter 17, we are looking there. Again, I'm speaking to you from what I was speaking last Sunday. 
want you to go to 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 55. It connects with us. David and Goliath. We read verse 55. And when he saw, saw David go further against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. Verse 56. And the king said, Enquire thou whose son a stripling his. He's not looking for the name of the person, just asking, whose son is this one? Verse 57. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Habna took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, O son, art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse, the Belenite. Go to chapter 18 from verse 1 to 4. And it came to pass, when he made an end, of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Verse 2, And Saul took him that day, and he would let him go no more home to his father's house. Verse 3, Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him, as his own soul. Finally, verse 4. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, the robe of a king's son, and gave it to David, the own the the, 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 the of inheritance, and his garment, even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his girdle. And the David went out the that whosoever saw send him and behaved himself wisely. And the saw set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. Repeat number four. And David went out with the whosoever saw send him. And he behaved himself wisely. And they saw, send him, set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. We will stop there. I'm speaking to you again about opportunities, rewards. Opportunity. The life that God has given us on earth is filled with opportunities. Last Sunday I was speaking to you again on opportunities. To wake you up to understanding opportunities. And I gave this understanding. Opportunities are like horses. And the person who has an opportunity is like riding on a horse. So when people look at you, they don't see the horse. They don't see the opportunity. They see you who is riding on the horse. I spoke about opportunity. And I'm closing today on opportunity because I believe this is where we need to understand how to deal with God to come to where God wants. A young man called David or son of Jesse, was the last born. And he was entrusted by his father. And David, we see, served in three areas. 
We see David serving in his father's house, proving himself in his father's house. He is looking after animals. Though he was anointed by Samuel, but even when he was anointed, he went to look after animals, to look after goats, to look after cows, to look after sheep, to look after all those animals that the father has. And therefore, he will be seen in the dust of the animals. He will be seen when the animals are with him. And if there is a weak animal, he will carry it on his shoulder. Uh, a, a lamp that, has, that is weak, he will carry it on his lamp. So God gave him, firstly, that opportunity. David had the first opportunity to serve at home. Always there is an opportunity. Because you use one opportunity to prove yourself to another opportunity. So David had the opportunity to prove himself in his father's house. So that he can win respect from his father and his mother and from his brethren by his life and his, co his conduct. So it's an opportunity to serve, to have an opportunity where you are given to serve. And many people do not like simple things. We always like the big thing. But it is not the big thing first. It is the small thing first. You prove yourself in what is very small. Because if you are not faithful with little, you cannot be trusted with much. So we prove ourselves with small things. We prove ourselves firstly at home. So David served his father and mother and served his brethren. This time when he has come, when there is a conflict between the Philistines and Israel, he has been sent by his father. Go and check how your brothers are doing. So he was a servant at home and proved himself before his father and before his mother. To lay a foundation of the man that one day would be king. But he did not start to be king. He started to be a shepherd boy. When he will be king, he will be telling people how we used to smell like a goat. When he will be a king, he will be telling people how we used to smell like a lamb. When he will be a king, he will be telling people how he used to care after animals. Because he had to prove himself in caring after animals so that he can be appreciated by God, that he can defend Israel and he can die for Israel and he can fight for Israel. He had to prove himself before God by having to deal with animals. Even the God who has called us, he grants us an opportunity to prove ourselves so that he can be justified to give us what he wants to give us. Many times we are looking for a big thing. We want to be somewhere big, but God gives us not big things first. He starts by giving us simple things, little things, where we can prove ourselves. So David was looking after goats, and he was looking after sheep, and he was looking after cows. David was a shepherd boy, and so he was at that level to prove himself. Because you prove yourself in small, so that you can be now apprehended for what is to come. The story of David is very important for the believer. Because Jesus Christ is called the son of David. And the people that will serve Christ, they have an element of the spirit that was in David. The people that are going to be used by God in a mighty way, they will not start with being great. They will start with being very low. They will start from the lowest. Because the God we serve is a God of humble beginnings. God trusts us firstly with coins, not with credit cards. God does not give us credit cards first. He gives us coins, the jinglings. Then when we prove ourselves there, he will take us to know how to handle credit cards. It is now you to prove yourself in small things that you shall be now approved for the great things. So David approved himself there in obeying his father, in obeying his mother, because it is in scripture that children obey your parents in the Lord. It is the Hebrew law. While it is taken by the apostle Paul in the New Testament, it worked 100% among the Jews. A son um, a daughter, they had to obey their father. It is a commandment. So David had to prove himself there. 
and you, he warned the heart of his father that the father now must send him to go and find out how is your brother's doing. Can you go and find out how your brother's is doing? Because he had been proven faithful. So he is given virtues. He is given things to carry. To go and see his brothers. He is given maybe some bread. He is given some butter. The Bible talks about bread and the butter. He is given something. Take this to your father. Because the father has proven him. Say to prove. Yeah. So the first opportunity that David had. Was to serve in his father's house. So that we can correct ourselves. When we are rebels at home. Let us not think about how to become more because we prove ourselves at home. So David is sent by his father after he has proven himself. And in his testimony, he has a record of his life. So David comes and he finds in the valley. He finds the Philistines on the other side and Israel on the other side. And immediately when he comes, there is an insult by this great warrior. And he is saying, are you not children of Saul? Give me one of you, and I will kill him and give him to the birds of the hair. And then he insults them. And David is looking at this man, and he has not looked at where he was. And he's asking, what will be given to the man who will kill this man? And they tell him all kind of story. One of them is, whoever anybody killing him, he will be made son to the king. He will be given a wife. He, their family, they will never pay tax. But he's not looking that he does not pay tax. His main concern is, why should the name of the Lord be insulted? Why should the name of the Lord do this be at? He is provoking the name of the Lord of hosts. He is not looking for a wife. He is not looking that they shall be tax free. He is looking for, why should the name of the Lord bear this shame? Why should the name of the Lord bear this shame? Why should the name of the Lord be insulted before all these generals and all these mighty men? And he is brought before the king. And the king looks at him and he says to him, you cannot fight with this warrior. This is a conventional warrior. He has been a warrior since he was born. You are not a warrior yourself. After all, you are not in Miami. He says, no, my lord. Your servant, and remember how he addresses him. He says, your first servant killed the bear and the lion. I looked at my father's flock. And when a lion came and he took one of the calves, I went after him, and I removed, I stabbed him, I killed him, and I removed the cup from his mouth. I have killed both the bear, and I have killed the lion. And this one will be like one of those. And now, he has come to a place. Because the Lord told us in this church, faith is not in tomorrow, faith is in today. Faith is in the past not in the future. It is where you are past where God grows your faith. It is where you are past where God builds your faith. So you can use now your resolve. You can use now your resource. What has happened to you yesterday becomes your account that you can use today. The things that you have gone yesterday, the things where God has passed you, the little things God has done for you, you can now use them as your account that you can go for tomorrow. You can defeat what is coming tomorrow, which is greater than that was there yesterday. Because the account of yesterday is the important to help you for tomorrow. Come on. So you must embrace every step that you go with God every day. Everything that the Lord brings you away is important every day. They are building up like an account. They build up like an account that you can say like David, I killed the lion. You can say like David, I killed the bear. Because those are instances that have handed to your record and have increased your faith. That your faith is not only what you are going to accomplish. There is a record of yesterday. And what God did yesterday is to be used tomorrow. Because all of us look for miracles. You want a miracle like this? You want a miracle like this? You want a miracle like this? But that miracle will be attracted by what God did yesterday. And if you forget what happened yesterday, you cannot assess what will come tomorrow. The little faith of yesterday can remove Goliath tomorrow. The little faith you had yesterday can remove the lion tomorrow. The little faith you had yesterday can be used by God to move the mountain. 
So yesterday is important. The second place for David is in the palace. In the palace is the place where there is everything. In the palace, you don't pay anything. It is all paid for. Transport is paid for. Food is paid for. Everything is there. You hear? When David came to the palace, Saul did not allow him to go to his father's house. In the palace, you don't rent houses. They are paid for. It is like in what you have in the state house. All state houses are free. You go to state house, everything is free. If you are president, you don't buy shoe polish, you don't buy petrol, you don't buy a car, you don't buy curtains, you don't buy nothing. It's the life of the palace. So David was brought to the palace and everything is free. And normally when things are free is when people backslide. When things are so soft, it is when people change their attitude. When people are blessed. Because now they are not smelling like goats. They are not smelling like cows. They have been to Sudan. They are very nice. They are not having machilingis because every food is there. They are eating well. There is water. There is a swimming place. Life is so easy, so nice. But this is the life of the palace. So David proved himself there. The record is simple. We are told that David by his life, he won the respect of the, of the king and the servants of the king. He won respect of the king by his life and the respect of all the servants by the conduct that he had. Why? He had been trimmed at home. Oh, Mr. Place of Trimming. Oh, Mr. Place of Correction. Oh, Mr. Place of Shaping. And when you are shaped at home, you shall be very good at the palace. So David was in the palace. His second area of opportunity. And now he finds favor. When Saul wants anything to be done, he says, David. If yeah, there is a problem, he says, David. If yeah, there is a, a, a situation in someone by another government, say, David. Anything, David. Because now David has come to the palace. And that is the place of proving himself. The life of David is like that. It is a picture of a person whom God is going to use in a mighty way. But he uses him. He develops him with stages by stages by stages. The person that the Lord is going to use, he develops him by stages. Stages, 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 stages. So even Peter... And the apostles that you are called, they are developed by stages, by stages, by stages, and you they become vicious of men. They were not given to be vicious first. They were called to learn how to fish men. When God is to use you, and I want you to see the life of David, he has to approve you in many, many areas. He has to approve you in many areas. And all God is looking for is that he may be justified, that he will not be blamed. That's why even Christ had to prove himself. The Bible says he learned obedience in the things that he suffered. He learned obedience, Christ. And that's why he died the death he died. That God can now give him a name that is above every name. God did not just give him. God allowed him like he allowed David to prove himself. God allowed Christ to prove himself so that he can be worthy of a name that is above every other name. So David in the palace, to prove himself in the palace. We are told in verse 5. Let's go back again so that we can refresh our minds. In verse 5, the younger man called David in verse 5. We are told about his, his things. And David went out, whither soever saw so send him. He's now in the palace. And he behaved himself, hear that wisely, behaved himself wisely. And the saw so set him over the men of war and he was accepted in their sight of all people and also in the sight of so servants winning respect of other people by your own life and character happy to be a Christian to live a life 
where you win people's respect by your life and the character. That you know those who are not equals with you, you know those who are officers over you, you know those who are equals with you, those whom you play about, those whom you embrace, those whom you do things, and others that are above you, you look at them with great honor. That's why the Apostle Paul talks about younger women and old women, so that the old women know to trust, they, they, they know to train the younger women. There is always cadres and greats in God, greats and cadres, so that there is always it will be those who are above you and those who are below you. There are those that when you come, when they come, you stand up and they tell you, sit down, because I believe if the president comes where you are, you stand up. Because you are not equal with the president. I believe there is always these settings in God that God gives us to prove by our lives how to win respect for others. Then in the president, you see what you are doing. He tell you, thank you. What are you doing? Then you explain to me, thank you. Continue doing what you are doing. Always. So David was working in the palace. Then after that, now he's chanted with the person of the president. He's not only working in his father's house, he has finished that opportunity. He's not in the palace. He's now dealing with having to be commissioned by the king what to do. And in that kind of a thing, it is where the problem came. Where Saul developed a problem, but it was intended for us that we may learn how to humble ourselves. So David is in difficulty with his master, and the master does not like him. Can you work for a master who does not like you? A master who is opposed to you. So Saul is looking for the life of David. And David is in difficulty because he can be killed every time. David has run away from his place. The king is looking to kill him. And David knows that Saul is the anointed of the Lord. David knows that Saul was anointed by Samuel. David knows I cannot arm the Lord's anointed. This is the last opportunity of David to be proven by God whether he can respect what God has done. So there is problem between David and Saul. Saul wants to kill David. And then God gives David opportunities where he can easily kill Saul. That Saul is sleeping somewhere. And David comes with his men. And they take the sword of Saul. And he goes with it. He goes with it over the other side of the ridge. And in the morning he calls him. He says, Saul... Where is Abner, your servant? This is the sword of the king that is in my hand. And today, the Lord gave me an opportunity to kill him. But I could not touch the Lord's anointed. The highest level where you can now prove whether you can undo authority, whether you can undo an anointing. You know our thinking is immediately the Lord begins to anoint us. We need to start our church Immediately the Lord are to anoint us, we begin inviting those who have raised us. We now begin a crack in the church, we break the church so that we can be told that we have started our ministry. That's not what David did. David endured all the suffering. That's why the Bible is saying, endure the suffering as a faithful soldier. He endured all the situation to prove himself before Saul, so that he can prove himself before God. That is David. You have not touched the Lord the anointed. You have proven yourself before your father. You have proven yourself before the soldiers and before the people and the servants. And now you have proven yourself before the Lord and before the king. Then you should be king. And therefore God is justified. You were anointed by Samuel. Now I can give you the kingship. Because you were anointed. And even when you are anointed, you can miss it. When you are anointed, you can fail. But the person who was anointed by Samuel, he walks all the way until the Lord will give it to him. Then he is anointed king of Israel. Wow. What a worker. A work of the Lord who has proven himself at home. That is like the local church because we prove ourselves in a local church. 
So if you are cleaning here, you are cleaning the toilet, this is your opportunity. We are not looking at the mob that you are holding. You are looking at the oars and you are clamped the oars. We are looking at the opportunity where you are when you are cleaning the floor. We are not looking at the floor, we are looking at you. Amen. At home, like in the local church, when you are washing the toilets and cleaning the toilets, people are not looking out at the toilet, they are looking at you who is cleaning the toilet. Because that is your opportunity, it is your oars, they are looking at where you are. When you look at a oars, you look at the one who is on the horse to prove yourself. The life of David speaketh how a worker is raised in progression. Our work is raised in simple duties that is proven in little duties and is proven there and he proves himself there and he wins command and he commands respect of others by his own conduct. It can be corrected, it can be advised, it can be encouraged, but he proves himself so that by his own life he can win respect of others. The life of David is like that. God put everything in the scriptures because he wanted workers, because he wanted rulers, because he wanted kings. After all, we who have followed Christ, we shall rule with him. Amen. Now, do you know when the disciples were asking him about what shall happen upon us? Not we have left our homes, we have left our houses, we have left everything. You know what he told them? He told them about what is to come. We shall have eternal life. But not only eternal life. We shall rule over cities and the rule over nations because God was looking for somebody to do things for him. Amen. So David's life is a life of persuasion to be persuaded for better things. Our problem is our zeal. Our problem is one day to be this overnight. Our problem is inability to be corrected. Our problem is inability to listen. Our problem is issues of patience that I have waited too long. For in God there is nothing like too long. For one day within God is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. God will use you if you obey him. So David had three opportunities. Firstly, the opportunity at home. Then again, the opportunity in the palace. And the opportunity to be directly under the king, to be charged with responsibility. And in them he failed. Neither did he touch the Lord's anointed. He proved himself in all these three opportunities. Then he was sworn in as king of Israel, and he rode for 40 years. All good kings rode for 40 years. So did he not accomplish 40 years, he had been less. But David proved himself, and he ruled for 40 years. God gave us to see the life of David, because God is looking for somebody to use. Amen. David is not here today, but you are there. Goliath is not there, but there are many Goliaths. There are always situations that God is looking, that he can use you. Opportunities. So let us our, ourselves to what we are given to do in the house of the Lord. Let's not have a preconceived mind that I want this. Let us be given some little thing to do where we can be proved. And I have said time and again, and I even say today, I thank God for the apostle, apostle does, who raised me, who gave me every kind of little thing to do. Because if I did not that, that opportunity, I would not become what I am. He gave me to be a deacon, to give me to ash and clean chairs, and to check that the brethren are comfortable where they are in LG 19. Opportunity, opportunity. Then he sent me to Kawangware, another opportunity, so that I can do whatever I am doing. And when I came to Kawangware, everything I did, I wrote a report to him. 
This is what I have done. This is the report of what I have done. Then it pleased him that I may be a presbyter. Opportunity, little opportunity. It starts with little opportunity. And you prove yourself in a little opportunity. A little opportunity. Even if it is cleaning the toilet. Even if it is cleaning the windows. Every opportunity we are given in the house of the Lord is to bring us to another level because God is looking for our worker. So Jesus called the 12 disciples. This is what he told them. Follow me and I will make you vicious of men. You see, it does not seem like what they would do for Jesus because he's not telling them, follow me and I will make you my servants. He tells them, follow me and I will make you vicious of men. So they followed him. But later when you see all of them that are writing, they say, Paul, servant of Christ. Peter, servant of Christ. James, servant of Christ. So in their call, they were called as ordinary men to be servants. When they were called, the idea was that they may be servants. And all their life is involved with serving Christ. And Christ wanted people that are so polished that they will serve him. And you have that opportunity in your life. You can make it in your life. If you can be proven in small things. If you can know the opportunities. The other day I was talking to you about opportunities that God will open for you. Because I believe God will open opportunities to you. Not only in Africa, but outside Africa. I believe God will open opportunities for you, not only in Kenya, but in Africa. Hear this, there is no country in Africa where the Lord cannot send you. God can send you anywhere. I believe God will open opportunity for you, not only in the county of Nairobi. There is no county in Kenya where God cannot send you. God will send you anywhere. But God cannot send you to mock him. God cannot send you to defy him. God sends you to become salt and to become light because we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But we must prove. We must prove ourselves in small things. Small, small things. Small. Because David proved himself at all. God is looking for you that you may serve him. God is looking for a worker like David. Then David became king, so it was fulfilled. Samuel did not anoint him for nothing. It was true. He was to be king of Israel, and he proved by his own life. Let me ask you to stand on your feet. Stand on your feet where you are. Say, Almighty God, today you are speaking to me again about opportunities because you are going to create opportunities. You are telling me opportunities are very important that I ride on them, that I will be seen on them, that I may do something for my Lord. You are telling me I am supposed to be proven at home in the local church where you have sent me, where you have set me. You still have a need of me. You can still use me. But you will have to use stages. You will have to give me a little here and a little there and a little there to complete your activity. Your eyes are upon me because you want to use me. You want to use me like David. You want to use me like a warrior, like a mighty man of war. But I must start by looking after goats. Most humbling thing, it starts by humility. The beginning of the walk with God starts with humility. So David began looking after animals in the place of humility. Help me 
that I may start the right place. I know that you shall take me places. But David began after looking after animals. The place of humility. The place of listening. The place of correction. The place of dust. The place of mockery. And Lord, you took him away from there. And you and the palace where David will be king. Almighty God, you are speaking to me about opportunities that you are going to present before me. Because I must prove myself in the opportunities that you gave me. And I bring my cry. Help me, Lord. Help me, my Lord. I have missed many opportunities. Help me, Lord. Teach me firstly humility, honesty, faithfulness. Teach me to be humble. Teach me not to be lofty. Teach me to respect others. To love, to love them. To serve them. Teach me to see your way. Because Jesus served in his father's house to prove himself before his father and mother. Almighty God, I am crying to you because I don't want to miss you for the great revival that is coming, for the great move of God that is coming, and for the great things you are going to do by my hand. And that I should not be overthrown in pride. And should not be overthrown by the multitudes of the money and the power that will come upon me. I humble myself concerning opportunities. Give me to shine in the opportunities that you have brought before me. The opportunity that I have where I live, among the people where I live, to be proven by them that by my life I can win respect of them even where I live. Almighty God, help me even where I live. Help me where I work that I can win the respect of others by my own life and the conduct. Lord, help me in the local church where I am that I can win respect of others, men and women, youth and children, by my life and the conduct. Lord, help me for the opportunity that you have given me in life. Because by it, I will go to the higher level. This is my cry today. I have missed many opportunities. And opportunities that were with me, they were taken away. The blessing that I had, some of them were taken by demons. But I call them back. I call every loss back. I call every loss back. Because I'm correcting my way. I call every loss back. I call every situation back. That I may prove myself like David. That you have saved me, O oh God. I am your child. I am your servant. I'm called by your name. Lord, I call upon you. Because you have a good plan for me. You have a good plan for David. Even when he was looking after goats, you knew he would be a king one day. And you allowed him to go through the ladder. I surrender, Lord. And I commit myself. And I repent over my past. I repent where I'm casual. Where I take things lightly. Lord, I ask you to show me mercy. Because this is the second visitation. 
where you are speaking of using me. You are talking about Avi to use me. You are talking about opportunities you are going to give me. So you are visiting me a second time. And I don't want to miss my visitation. You are the God who raises apostles. You raise apostles. You raise prophets. You raise evangelists. You raise pastors. You raise teachers. You raise men and women to serve you. Here I am, Lord. And I cleanse my life. I ask that you help me. Lift up your hands. I ask that you help me, Lord. I ask that you help me, Lord. I ask that you may cause me as I follow after you that I will become what you intended me to become. That I was not anointed for nothing because David was not anointed for nothing. Hear my cry, O God. I bring my life before you. 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 Let's bring our lives before the Lord. Talk to the Lord where you are. Talk to the Lord where you are. Talk to the Lord where you are. I bring my life. Oh, Ramashande Lebeke and Lebeandu. 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 Oh, ya mashanda ile karabaya de ni bashanda. Oh, ya mashanda ile karabaya de ni bashanda. Oh, ya mashanda la bakoro boyade. Oh, ya mashanda Lord, that I may make it, that I may make it and the produce, that I may make it, that we may make it, that you may make it, oh God, that you may make it. Oh God Almighty. Oh, Ramashala Bakara Bashada. Oh, Yamashala Bakara. Oh, Yamashele. Oh, Yamashala Bayande. Oh, Yamashande. Oh, Yamashala Bayande. Oh, Yamashande. Oh, Yamashala. Oh, Yamashele Bayande. Oh, Yamashala. Oh, God of Mashana. Oh, God Almighty. Oh, God Almighty. You spoke in this church. And you say, you shall raise ten men, O oh God. Shall ten, raise ten men, O oh God. 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 You spoke in this church. And David was a man like ten of us. And if David made it, if we obey you, we can make it. Teach me to know you have a need of me. Say, Almighty God, you have a need of me. That you brought me to yourself. You brought me to yourself. Because you have a need of me. You called the disciples. Because you are in need of them. Not to disappoint them. You called them to come out of nothing to something. You and I need of them. You have need of me. Help me to correct my life. Help me to shape my life because you saved me because you have need of me. And I promise, Lord, if you hold me by your hand, I can make it. You are true to David. And David made it. And I believe I'm going to make it. I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine. I'm going to make it. I'm not going to fail. I'm going to make it. And every opportunity that comes my way, I will know it is opened by the Lord. That I may prove myself there. And I will embrace it. And I will serve there. And you, the Lord, you will move me to the next level. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a clap where you are. Give the Lord a shout where you are. Give him a shout. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We magnify your name. Father, I thank you. 
Because when you send apostles, they were to raise us. And when they have raised us, we are to raise other people. So I bless my brethren. I bless the flock of the Lord. I bless the children of God. I bless the men of God. I bless the women of God. I bless the youth of God. I bless the children of God. To the glory of your name, they shall make it. They shall make it. Oh, Ramashala Baruna. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands. Lord, I bless the flock that you have set under the apostolic ministry that you said of Apostle Das. And by Apostle Das, that you shall raise mighty men, shall raise mighty women. Africa shall be filled with mighty men. Kenya shall be filled with mighty men. East Africa shall be filled by mighty men. And those mighty men are here. I speak to them, O oh God. I bless them, O oh God. I speak to them, O oh God. And I bless them. I bless every child. I bless every youth. I bless every mother. I bless every girl. I bless every boy. I bless every man. I bless every father. They shall become what God intended them to become. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Blessed is your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up all the hands with one accord. Sing it, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of Can you lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord? Lift up your hands and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord where you are. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord where you are. Bless the name of the Lord where you are. Bless the name of the Lord where you are. Bless the name of the Lord our God. We glorify you. We adore you. We magnify your name. Give the Lord and clap where you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You may take your seat, please. We are about to close, and I want to bring one announcement to ourselves. This week we send a message to our health, to the deaconesses and we send a message to the elders so there is some information circulating among the elders and information circulating among the deaconesses but it may not be circulating among the members of the church. So as pastor I sought to bring a certain message to this congregation because what we are gathering today and in this assembly, there is one person who is in distress. There is one person who has lost their mother. And so when I spoke and sent messages to the deaconesses, because it related with the deaconesses, and when I sent the message to the elders, it is that the elders in a local church must know this is how we are supposed. We are not supposed to have our work where there are matters happening and the elders are caught unaware. They don't know what is happening. We are not supposed to have our work where things are happening and the deaconesses who are wives of elders also, they are not aware of what is happening because that is to raise our work that has information concealed and the information concealed does not help the people. So I send a message because Pastor Agnes lost her sister. And she's a deaconess, so I send a message to the deaconesses so that they may know their sister, their mother, has lost her sister. 
I also sent a message to the elders to tell them, Pastor Agnes, your pastor has lost her sister. And what I wanted is that they hold themselves in prayer and that they pray for both the person who has lost their mother and the person who has lost their sister. Do I have Gile today here? Gile, please, where are you? Come. When we are in this service today, all of you know this little girl. This little girl has grown in our home since she was in primary school. And uh, she lives with us. She's like part of our children. She and the Mutisa are children that we adopted. All of you know Mutisa, the wife of Dr. Kirenge. Together with this child, we raise them like our children. Their mother has not been well. And uh, on that day, my wife was called from Kenyatta Hospital because we had taken the mother to Kenyatta Hospital with sister to Agnes. She's the Sister Agnes is followed by other three girls behind her. And Sister Agnes went to the hospital. And she was told that her sister had passed on. So when you are gathering like this, this daughter here, this youth, has lost her mother. And I warned you that we unite together, that we bring great comfort, and that together we can go and lay to rest the mother or the body of the mother of this child. So I'm talking to you because this is a youth. So I want to thank all the youths that turned up to our house just to comfort Gile. I want to thank all of you that came out, thank the elders who came to our house when you received the news. We were just letting you know because you can see the situation in which you are. And a person like this, a young person. So her mother has not been feeling well. And I told her to leave what she was doing. She was working somewhere. And I told her, I want you to stay with your mommy. I do not want that you end up with pain that you did not spend good time for your own mother. We were believing God even when we were called to the hospital. We did not know that she had passed. Because we spent a lot of time crying for two people here in this church on Wednesday. The bottom line is very simple. A member of this church has lost a mother. Just like a member of this church can lose her father, or a member of this church can lose her child, a member of this child can lose her father, or a mother, or a brother, or a sister. And it is the honors of the pastor of this church to make those things to be known, to bring in the congregation to know we must stand with one who is afflicted and the one who is paining. So we are about to set the date for burial. I believe the families are all working together. We are working with other family. And I believe by this week, starting tomorrow, by Wednesday, Friday, we will have known which date we are going to do the burial. But I believe the burial will not be necessary this week, but most likely next week. So prepare yourselves to stand with this. Younger people, please, I want to see in the church Younger people that relate with young ones. I want to see men who relate with men, women who relate with men. I want us to see, I want our work where people know the settings that are among them. So we have brought that to know. We are preparing yourselves. You are free to prepare yourself. If you want to send any money, we are not asking for money. But if you view you send some money, you can send it to the mother of to Pastor Agnes. We will later point out when you have said the budget. She will collect all the monies, but I'm just saying in the event. But we are going to come to that most likely this week, Wednesday and Friday. So please, I've let you know that our sister, this member of this church, while we are here, she's having that pain. And I have always said, when any of us go through a pain, we who are mature know how to stand to comfort that person. So I can ask you to stand on your feet. I want you to stretch your hands. Stretch your hands to us as here. Say, Almighty God, you are the giver of life. 
you have given us everything. And when you take our life, our responsibility is one. To stand with the ones who are left and to give attention to the deceased. We pray for our sister, for grace, to have grace, to know love of God, to know that we love her, the church loves her, the eldership loves her, the deaconesses love her, the youth love her. As our work of God, we love her. And we want your comfort upon her. We want her to know that the Lord you are God. And you have given her the opportunity to have a mother and to serve that mother. And while the mother has gone, you will give her another opportunity to do another thing. So we pray for comfort. We pray for the arrangements. We pray for the families. In all the plans they are making, there will be no arts, no disappointments. Everything will be done well. And we will stand with our sister and lay the body of our mother to rest peacefully and honorably. And we thank you, Lord. So we pray for love and honor among ourselves that we have great value for one another that we care for one another, we stand with one another, and we never allow one another to serve in our midst. And today, as we pray, we commit the whole matter into your hands. You shall provide all the resources, the finances, any monies that are required, that the mother of our sister will not be drawn to the Ainas. She will not be hid. She will not be thrown in a forest. She will be given a decent burial. Just because of her daughter. Because she's a child of this family. And Lord, we thank you. Pray for peace. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we say, and everyone will say, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap. You may take your seat, please. So I'm saying I'm going to bring you arrangements that are there in the families. And when you let you know, we will, we will trust in God, maybe Wednesday, we will let you know, or Friday. But I'm saying their brethren, they just may want to give any help before we ask you for help, or they may just want to give some money. Please, if you are giving any money, send it directly to Pastor Agnes, you know our number. Deaconesses, they know. Or if you do not know our number, but you can always ask our number and we will let you know our number. So that whatever we are raising, we are doing that. I want us to do that. So I will meet the youths. And I said, I thank you, youths, youths that came yesterday. Uh, I, I came in the church. When I came in the church, I saw sister, the children were there. And I, I, I was so overwhelmed to see what sister of course is doing with the children there. But I am requesting that if we can all can arrange that we can bring the children maybe by 9 o'clock so that by 10 o'clock they are the room. We will have to find out what it means do we do because after that we will have to list them to go back to the house. We will have to find out the arrangement that we make. So if we start by bringing them, then we shall be able to handle the issue of when and how do we take them back home. So I believe if we do that, we will be able to build our back our Sunday school. Remember from the month of June, I said, let us restore the church back to its life, the life of the church, so that we can do exactly what we are supposed to do. So please, let us remember matters of our children. Remember also, uh, they should come to the Sunday school by 9 o'clock. We will look at to see if we can create a second service, maybe in the afternoon, or we can find out. My, my main concern is, because the parents who are bringing them, they are also looking to be in the service, but they are looking at, do they take them and come back or what? But we shall sort that out as we go. For now, I want to believe that we can receive the information that we have received and undo it ourselves. So stay us in prayer. Stay our family in prayer. Stay the family of our, my wife in prayer. 
they are meeting and we are going to give you further developments as we shall find it so that we are all reading from the same script and that we are all speaking the same language. But the whole idea is very simple. We want that peacefully we can do what is necessary in the matter of burial for the mother of Ngile. I want to turn the meeting back to the elder to see if there are any matters that he wants to bring to the notice of the people, more especially if there are people that can be acknowledged, visitors that can be acknowledged, visitors that may be with us today, other people that may be away or have just returned back to the work, brethren that have been away from other countries that have come, etc., etc., people that have some giving to the Lord, that gives thanksgiving or whatever giving they want to make. So can you please come? Give the Lord and clap, please. the Lord. We, wa we, want to know, we want to know if we have visitors in our midst. So we are requesting that uh, if you are a visitor in our midst, you can be able to raise your hand. If you are probably you are one of us, you've been away and uh, today you have come. We request that uh, you, you stand. So do we have any visitors by a show of hands? The brethren who are among us. Ah, we have a visitor. Let's clap for her. You, you can uh, take a step and uh, just come in front. We give you an opportunity just to greet us. Do we have brethren who have been away for more than two weeks? They have not been with us for two Sundays and they would want to just greet the brethren. Just, just stand here. Thank you. Okay, we are seeing another visitor also coming. You can clap for her. And another one also. So you can, you can just stand on this line. Just stand here. Just stand here facing this side. Just stand here facing this side. You, you can come here. Though she was the first one to come, so we'll allow you to stand there. Please come and greet the brethren. Uh, you... You can tell us your name. Uh, tell us if you are born again. Praise God. Praise God again. I'm Karen from Spirit of Christmas Church. We are not able to hear you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. I'm born again. I'm from Christo Church, Kerich. Your, your name is? Karen. She's, she's called Karen, and she's from Christo Church, Kericho can clap for her. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Um, my name is Amada Nelima. I have been living at Uvani, Kitui County, and for now, I am joined. There is no one here. I think he, she's out. But I'm happy to be here. I know that this morning I have been blessed. Thank you. Amen. Are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. first time to be in church ever since I came to Nairobi and I'm born again and I'm so happy to be here. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. There are some brethren who have uh, thanksgiving. We want to give them an opportunity just to, go bef to come before God and to give thanks to God for what God has done for them. So this is an opportunity. We have Sister Caro. So let's give her a clap as she comes. Caroline Masinde, ni meoko kana mpenda Yesu kwa kuwa aliniokoa. Eh, this afternoon I just want to give thanks to the Lord in regard to the word of the Lord that a servant of the Lord gave us last Sunday concerning a rare opportunities. And I was able from Monday to get this rare a chance in the place of work, uh, I was uh, uh, considered to stand in as a procurement officer. It's a position that is held Amen. for two weeks. It's a position that is held for those ones who have decrees. For me, I don't have a decree, nor, nor do I have a certificate. But when God says, when God speaks, there is no one who can defeat it. There, there is a colleague of mine who has a decree in procurement, but I tell you, God can speak on your behalf. Because when the senior management sat down, the director, who was just a new director, um, chose my name because I've worked there in different departments. I've worked in the Kesha, in the car and in the accounts. And uh, right now, I'm working in the store department as well as in the procurement. I'm uh, working as a procurement officer. Uh, and I'm happy to, pray to get that chance. Amen. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have seen God's word being proven true. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, uh, I'll request uh, Elder Wino just to come and pray for the thanksgiving. You can clap for him. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Use them for your glory, supply unto them according to your chosen glory. We bless your name and we worship you, for it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. I request that we stand up. Let's just stand up a bit. Let's just go before God and just give thanks to God for this day. We thank God for the things that he has done in our midst. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. Lord, we thank you, dear Father. We thank you for your goodness upon our lives today. We came this morning, oh God, expecting. And we thank you because you have, you have met our expectation, oh God. 
We glorify you. We thank you. We honor you, O oh God, for your goodness, for your mercies, O oh God, for speaking to us, O oh God, for ministering to our lives, O oh God, for healing us, O oh God, today. We thank you. We appreciate you, O oh God. We honor you and we exalt you, O oh God, for you never, honor your, you never gather your people in vain, O oh God, but you have kept something for us today, and you have brought something for us, O oh God. We thank you, dear Lord, for we shall not leave this place, O oh God, the same again. O oh God, we appreciate you and we honor you. We exalt you and we give you praise, O oh God. You are our God. God, and we glorify your name and we thank you dear father we honor you oh god so we pray this in jesus name amen amen we can take our seats i'll request our leader the prophet just to to bless us even as we even as we conclude I ask you to stand on your feet please So that we can we can say the final benediction. Remember the word that the Lord gave us concerning his flock, concerning his people. And the Lord spoke to Moses and they instructed him about the, the specialness of his people. That the people of God are special. So God was telling Moses, because he has called Israel, Israel is is, and by that call they are special to him. In Numbers chapter 6, I'm reading this scripture to you. Numbers chapter 6. <clears throat> because of the specialness. So God was telling Moses to give instructions to Aaron how to handle the people of God, how to handle the flock of God. This is what the scripture says in Numbers chapter 6. If you are looking at it because of the specialness of the children of God, the specialness because they are his. So then they are to be released, they are supposed to be blessed. So in Numbers chapter six, we look at verse 22. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, speak unto Aaron and to his son saying, on this wise he shall bless the children of Israel. So God is the one who is instructing Moses that the children of Israel, because they are his, because he has called them, they are his, they should be blessed. For the Lord is blessed. His children should be blessed. Then he tells him another part and says, he shall bless them, say. Then he says, and the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Just wait, listen. He's telling them, he's telling them that the Lord bless thee and the Lord keep them. So that the Lord will bless them and the Lord will keep them. Then he comes to verse 23, that the Lord will make his face to shine upon them, that they shall shine. That the Lord will bring them to a new shining and be gracious unto them. And he says, the Lord lift his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Because God has called us to the peace of his, himself. So I want us to lift up our hands so that we can say this benediction. Say, Almighty God, we thank you as we leave this place. We are the blessed of the Lord. We are the children that God has raised in the New Testament. You and your children in the Old Testament. That you have established as a nation. Called Israel. And you are establishing us. In the New Testament. As your own people. Called the church. And as you blessed Israel, you seek to bless us because we are special in your eyes. And as we live, we thank you. So I lift up your hands. Now the Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. The Lord go before you. The Lord cause you to go through. The Lord prosper you. The Lord place opportunities before you. The Lord caused the word that you have heard to have effects. Amen. The Lord caused the multiplication of the word that you have heard. Amen. The Lord caused you to be called from overseas. Amen. The Lord caused you to have jobs that are being called for in another country. Amen. The Lord caused promotion in the country where you are. Amen. The Lord promote you in what you are doing. 
The Lord raise a salvation for you, a mouth of salvation. The Lord come to your business. The Lord go before you. The Lord protect you on the way. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord shall make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord let his countenance upon thee. And the Lord give you peace. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord and clap. And now we can say the grace. So can you prepare yourself to say the grace? When we say our grace, we stretch our arms one to another to guard against protocols that are given so that we not uh, breaking them. But you can stretch your arms towards one another. You can speak to one another. One, two, three, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.